Hi everybody, Matt back with you on a very wild and windy Friday. Today we're going to cover another 19th century murder story from Todmorden's dark history. Now we've done two of these already. Um, this one is in the middle of how well known all three of them are. The first one we covered was the most famous one which was the murder at the vicarage. The second one was the murder at Hanging Ditch, which seemed that not many people knew about. So this one sits somewhere in the middle and is about Clara Law, John William Holstead, which was described in the newspapers at the time of its happening as a tragic love story gone wrong. Clara Law was born in 1864 and lived on Dale Street in Todmorden. At 17 years old, Clara started to become friendly with John William Holstead, who lived at Victoria Terrace at Eastwood, a couple of miles outside of Todmorden. He was a butcher or training to become one. They became engaged and they courted for five years, but in 1888 they had separated. In 1889 Clara started working at the Todmorden Co-op on Dale Street, a fantastic building that was also on the same street where she lived. Clara lived roughly here and the co-op was further down on the left-hand side. She was employed as the manageress of the confectionery department. A fairly good job to have for a young woman in Victorian England. The Todmorden co-op was not just a row of shops, but above it there was also cafes and a ballroom. It continued to exist until roughly 1960 when a fire tore through it and destroyed the entire interior. It never reopened and eventually it was bulldozed to make way for the houses that stand there today. But we will return to the co-op itself later in the story. Because... John William Holstead had also obtained a position in the co-op as assistant manager in the butcher's department, the shop right next door to Clara's confectionery store. Clara and John started to communicate again, but John had already acquired another girlfriend and was engaged to Mary Hodson. However, other employees noted that the two of them had certainly become friendly again. So friendly that in April 1891, Clara went to her mother and confessed that she was pregnant and the baby was John's. John tried to convince Clara that abortion would be the best option and even brought equipment for her which would cause this to happen. He did this twice and Clara's mother destroyed the equipment. Realising she would have to see the pregnancy through, as it would soon be noticeable she was pregnant, Clara decided she would hand her notice in to the co-op in August. Clara and John met up on Saturday the 1st of August, and Clara asked John if he would do the right thing and marry her. John agreed that by Thursday the 6th he would sort something out, that he would pay for any doctor's expenses and that, if necessary, he would marry her. Entering our story comes Anthony Bowden and his family. They lived on Water Street, the cobbled street next to Dale Street. His daughter was about to celebrate her 21st birthday. Grace's birthday was the 8th of August but she was to celebrate it on Monday the 3rd of August in a room above Clara's confectionery department. 
Clara was providing the party food and was staying late that evening. The party came and went. The caretaker closed and locked the building and went home. The co-op was in darkness. But it seemed that Clara had not left. Clara's parents became worried that she hadn't returned home that evening began to start searching and eventually, about midnight, headed to wake the caretaker. Clara's father, William Law, and the caretaker went into the co-op and there, sadly, on the floor of the confectionery department was Clara. She'd been stabbed in the neck three times. Her clothes were soaked in blood and she was beyond any help. Not far from her was the knife that she used to cut sandwiches. The blade was clean, but there were blood stains on the handle. The police and the doctor were sent for, and Clara's body was carried back to her home. The next morning, the co-op opened as normal. John William Holstead turned up to work as normal and he was told about what had occurred the night before. He became quiet but kept working. The police arrived to question him, and though no charges were brought, John was suspended pending the investigation. Tuesday the 5th of August, the police came and took a statement from John about his whereabouts on the Monday evening. He said that on that evening he'd seen Clara about 5pm when she'd come into the butcher's shop and bought some meat, presumably, uh, for the party that was going to happen. He'd also spied her at 8.15, but just in passing, before he'd left the co-op and gone home. Amazingly, he then said that he knew nothing about Clara's pregnancy that he hadn't agreed to marry her, that he hadn't been dating her for the last five years, and he'd certainly never met her on the Saturday evening. All the while, whilst questioning, he remained calm, cool and collected. So this is Victoria Terrace at Eastwood, about a couple of miles outside of Todmorden, on the way to Hebden. This was the home of John Holstead. And he woke up on Wednesday, 5th of August, 10 minutes to 8, and set off on a walk towards Todmorden. En route, he bumped into his brother, Edmund. Edmund asked his brother where he was going. John just replied, for a walk, and carried on his way towards Todmorden, possibly even on the path that we're on just now. At some point, John veered off to the right and followed a path that ran next to the train line. Eventually, he came out at the entrance the Horsefall Tunnel. The railway tunnel runs under the hill that I'm currently walking over. John waited at the entrance to the tunnel. Eventually, a train emerged from Horsefall Tunnel. At that point, John ran across the tracks and leapt in front of the train holding up both his hands. The train couldn't break. It ran straight over him, slicing him in two. John's body was recovered and returned back to his home at Victoria Terrace. Inside his pocket was a letter addressed to his brothers and sisters. The letter claimed he wanted to commit suicide, alongside a few other things there was not one mention of Clara.
In a bizarre twist, the train driver's name was Sam Greenwood. And he would eventually marry Alice Bowden, the sister of Grace Bowden. The girl whose party was going on at the cooperative at the same time of Clara's murder. At an inquest at the Duke of York, Clara's mother had to reveal full details of Clara's pregnancy, John's engagement to another and the possible abortion of the baby. After statements from both families were read, it was decided that Clara Law had definitely been murdered, but there was insufficient evidence to show by whom the knife wounds had been caused that had led to Clara's death. So now we're at Crossstone Graveyard on the hills above Tommerdon, a location we seem to keep coming back to in these stories. This graveyard has thousands of names from Todmorden's past. This side of the graveyard, though, is no longer in use, and most of the names today are forgotten. This particular gravestone here belongs to a lady who lived at Castle Lodge, next to Castle Hill School in Todmorden. And a few weeks ago I had a go at tidying it up. Little did I know that just a few gravestones further down from here was the tomb and grave of Clara Law. Not an easy grave to find, mostly because she is buried with a family called Metcalf, not with other members of her own family, although the Metcalfs may well be relations. Not too sure why. This is Clara's final resting place. <laughs> Now I'm searching for John Holstead, as it was suggested that he was buried at Crossstone. Well, I presume due to the circumstances that it may well be an unmarked grave. But to my surprise, here at the top of the graveyard, I found the grave, the family, which includes John William Holstead. Died on the 5th of August, 1891. Incredibly, initially, the date of the burial for both Clara and John was on the same day. This was changed, of course, because was decided it would be inappropriate for both families to be burying their children at the same time. So John was on one day and Clara was on the other. So there we go, a fairly graphic tale from Todmorden's past. Certainly a sad story. A few little bits mentioned still. Um, one was that I mentioned um, that Holstead was trying to give Clara something to abort her pregnancy. Uh, he wanted to give her a mixture of gin and turpentine. Uh, so that would certainly have probably done it, but thank goodness it would probably have killed her anyway. Um, the knife that they found at the crime scene 
was actually eventually ruled out as well as the possible murder weapon uh, because apparently it was too small to have caused those wounds. And uh, so what happened to that murder weapon? Uh, I'm not so sure. Although the jury did find um, insufficient evidence to say that Holstead carried out the murder, um, it was called probable that he'd caused it. Um, so that was as far as that went. But because it didn't get a specific answer, uh, a lot of the public at the time refused to blame um, Halstead for what had happened. Some even said, well, if there's no murder weapon, probably Clara committed suicide. Um, so I'm not going to details about that now. There is a podcast done by Sarah Trouser uh, that you can listen to on Spotify. Uh, I'll put the link to it in the description below and she goes into depth about uh, what was going on in the town after the events of what happened uh, and the politics back and forth uh, of what was going on. Uh, lastly, I said I'd come back to the co-op uh, and that is that after Clara's death uh, there were multiple reports from employees of sightings of the ghost of Clara good number of the employees refused to go into the cellar. And a caretaker later reported that in his 25 years there, he'd seen multiple uh, times Clara's ghost. And even she, he thought she was playing a game with him because he and his wife would go around uh, and lock the building up and in the morning the locks would be off and the doors wide open. Um, as always with these things, believe what you like. So that's the end of our trilogy of Todman and murder stories. Let's hope things are better today. Take care. See you soon.